What up, guys? Welcome to Downtown Ray Mello, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Friday, September 6, 2019, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at The Enter Report, or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Actor producer Will Smith and writer producer Kavia Goldsman are reteaming to adapt the book Brilliance. The Hollywood Reporter reported. Saki Goldsmith uh, wrote and produced Smith's I Am Legend, wrote I Robot, and produced Hancock. Smith appears in Goldman's directorial debut, featured Winter's Tale. Marcus Sarkis' novel, One Percent of Children Have Special Powers. The government calls them brilliance and tracks them. The other 99% simply calls them twists or abnorms as a form of hate speech. Smith would pay federal agent Nick Cooper, according to Deadline. Cooper hunts evil abnorms, but he is an abnorm himself, able to predict the future and adapt accordingly. Cooper hunts assassin John Smith and begins to question whether he's on the right side. Previously, when Legendary Pictures was developing brilliance for Universal, Smith was attached and dropped out. At the time, Smith chose to film Concussion. Apparently, Smith never lost interest as he signed on to the Paramount package. Saki has already written two sequels, novels, while Brilliance was in development, making the film a potential trilogy, too. Goldsmith won an Oscar for writing A Beautiful Mind. Smith has had a hit this summer with Disney's live-action Aladdin. He next appears in Paramount's Gemini Man and the Sony sequel Bad Boys for Life. He also provides a voice for the animated film Spies in Disguise. Unbroken and 71 actor Jack O'Connell and Star Trek Discovery and Harry Potter alum Jason Isaacs are in final talks to star in the Sean Ryder biopic Twisting My Lemon. Deadline reported O'Connell, who uh, would play the Happy Friday, uh, Monday's frontman, and Isaacs would play his musician father Derek. The 1980s alt rock band is known for its hits Hallelujah and Mad Serial. Variety said Holiday Granger is in negotiations to play Ryder's girlfriend. Maxine Peak is up for the role of his mother in the film. The project was announced at the Toronto International Film Festival on Friday. Production is scheduled to begin in January. RLJE Films announced Friday it has acquired the U.S. rights to Nicolas Cage's sci-fi horror movie, Color Out of Space. The announcement came before the project had its world premiere Saturday at the Toronto International Film Festival. The synopsis reads, After meteorite lands in the front yard of their farmstead, Nathan Gardner and his family find themselves battling a mutant extraterrestrial organism as it infects their minds and bodies, transforming their quiet role into a technicolor nightmare. Based on the short story by H.P. Lovecraft and directed by Richard Stanley, the movie co-stars Jolie Richardson, Madeline Author, Brendan Mayer, Julian Hillard, Elliot Knight, and Yurinka Kilcher. Um, Mark Ward, the chief acquisitions officer for RLJE Films, said in a statement, Nicholas Cage unleashes another memorable performance, an incredible follow-up on the heels of Mandy. Cage is an Oscar winner who, with credits that include National Treasure, Leaving Las Vegas, Con Air, Face Off, Raising Arizona, and Valley Girl. Harry Potter alum Tom Felton is to star in the Netflix family film A Babysitter's Guide to Monsters Hunting. Joe Ballerini penned the screenplay for the movie, which is based on his book series about a secret society of fierce babysitters who protect children from a world of monsters, the streaming service says. Ghostbusters director Ivan Reitman is producing the project, which will also feature Tamara Smart, Una Lawrence, Alicia Scalzato, Ian Ho, and India Moore. Uh, director Richard Tellet, whose credits include Doctor Who and Sherlock, is shooting the film in Vancouver. Amazon Prime Video said season two of its John Krasinski lead action thriller Tom Clancy Jack Ryan is slated to debut on November 1st. The synopsis says, after tracking a potentially suspicious shipment of illegal arms in the Venezuela jungle, CIA officer Jack Ryan, portrayed by Krasinski, heads down to South America to investigate. 
As Jack's investigation threatens to uncover a far-reaching conspiracy, the president of Venezuela launches a counterattack that hits home for Jack, leading him and his fellow operatives on a global mission spanning the United States, United Kingdom, Russia, and Venezuela to unravel the president's nefarious plot and bring stability to a country on the brinks of chaos. Show co-stars Wendell Pierce, James Greer, Naomi Ray Pace, and Michael Kelly. Ryan asks aloud in a 90-second trailer released on Thursday, what's the most major threat on the world? Stage, Venezuela is the single greatest resource of oil on the planet, so why is this country in the midst of one of the greatest humanitarian crises in history? He also reveals his concern that Russia has sold nuclear weapons to the corrupt Venezuelan president. The clip shows chaos on the streets of Venezuela, a car bomb exploding, and Ryan jumping off a building. Season 2 was renewed before Season 1 premiered in 2018. It has already been renewed for a third season. Spectrum Originals released a teaser for its upcoming revival of the classic sitcom Mad About You on Thursday. Starring Helen Hunt and Paul Reiser as married New Yorkers Paul and Jamie Butchman, the show is set to return with six new episodes on November 20th. Another six will be available for streaming on December 18th. The series initially ran for seven seasons from 1992 to 1999. Also returning for season eight along with Riser and Hunt are Richard Kine as the couple's friend Mark and John Pacow as Paul's cousin Ira. Abby Quinn will play Paul and Jamie's college-bound daughter Mabel. Thursday's 30-second preview shows Paul and Jamie walking around their neighborhood smiling and shopping. It pays homage to the show's original opening credits and includes its iconic theme song, Final Frontier. All 164 episodes are now streaming on Spectrum. Gary Sinise has signed on to play a family therapist in the fourth and final season of the Netflix drama 13 Reasons Why. Most of Sinise's scenes will be opposite Dylan Minnette, who plays Clay Jensen, Variety says. Series creator Brian Yorkey told Deadline.com, From the first moments we conceived off the role, I thought of Gary Sinise, but hardly dared to dream it might happen. A consummate actor and first-rate human, Gary brings the exact combination of toughness, smarts, and heart the character needs. We all are thrilled and honored to have him join us for this pivotal role in our final season. The series follows teens reeling from the suicide and murder of fellow students at their high school, where a massacre was also planned, but prevented. Sinise is known for his roles in the film of Mice and Men, of Apollo 13, Forrest Gump, and The Green Mile, as well as the TV shows CSI, New York, Frasier, and Criminal Minds Beyond Borders. Several cast members from the canceled sci-fi series Timeless have joined the Season 2 ensemble of the superhero satire The Boys. Uh, Eric Cripple, who was the show's runner for NBC's Timeless and holds the same post at Amazon's The Boys, said, Timeless fans, lucky, mini reunion, so excited to work with some of my favorite people. At Gorgon Vaniskek and Just Dumit and Malcolm Barrett, thanks for coming to play in The Boys TV, hashtag Season 2, hashtag The Boys, hashtag The Boys TV, hashtag SPN, hashtag SPN Family. Deadline says uh, Goran Viznik will play the leader of a mysterious church, and Claudia Dumit will play a, uh, a dynamic congresswoman on The Boys, while Malcolm Barrett appeared in Season 1 and will return in his role as Vought Marketing Executive. Co-starring Abigail Spencer and Matt Lantner, the history theme adventure show Timeless wrapped two seasons and uh, wrapped up late last year with a TV movie. The boys follow a group of men, a group of men and women with extraordinary powers who work for a conglomerate. Its ensemble includes Carl Urban, Jack Quaid, Chase Crawford, Aaron Moriarty, and Dominic McGilka. Wonder Woman and monster filmmaker Patty Jenkins has signed a multi-year deal to produce new shows exclusively on Netflix. Jenkins' uh, TV credits include The Killing, Entourage, and I Am the Night. Her next movie is Wonder Woman 1984, which is set for release in theaters in 2020. Channing Dungey, the streaming service vice president of original series, welcomed Jenkins to Netflix in a statement on Thursday. Dungey says... Her trailblazing work has pushed boundaries, and she confidently tells stories that leave an unforgettable mark. We look forward to fostering her many ideas and helping them come to life. Jenkins added, I'm so excited to embark on a great journey of making the new world of television with the company and group of people I admire. I look forward to digging in to some great work together soon. Four episode Queer Eye, We're in Japan, is set to debut on Netflix November 1st. 
The press release from the streaming service says Antoni Parowski, Bobby Burke, Jonathan Van Nees, Karama Brown, and Tan France bring their expertise to Tokyo to make better for heroes while experiencing Japanese cuisine, fashion, design, grooming, and culture firsthand. Model and actress Kiko Mishihara serves as the Fat Five's guide throughout Japan, while comedian Naomi Watanabe will be a special guest on the show. Season 4 of Queer Eye debuted this summer, and the show has already been renewed for a fifth season. Vanessa will soon be on the promotion trail for his new memoir, Over the Top, and Brown is competing on Dancing with the Stars. Kendall Jenner said on The Tonight Show that she helped her sister Kim Kardashian come up with Psalm's name after the infant was born. Mile told host Jimmy Fallon on Thursday that Psalm wasn't her first choice for the baby, but that Kardashian settled on the name after discussing for hours. Jenner said she would not leave the uh, leave me uh, the house until we figured out a name, and then ending up going with a name that I didn't even like, that I didn't care for as much. Jenner continued, I think that they were all really beautiful, but I was kind of rooting for another name. Psalm West, who was born in May, is Kardashian's fourth child with her husband, Kanye West. The couple are parents to six-year-old daughter uh, North, three-year-old son Saint, and one-year-old daughter Chicago. Jenner and Fallon also played a game of Pour It Out when they took turns giving answers to mysterious and personal questions. The game involved having to either answer what the question was or to take a shot. Jenner and Fallon both admitted to answering which two celebrities they would want to set up with each other. Jenner said Brad Pitt and Rihanna Wow found paired together Avengers star Chris Evans and Brie Larson. Jenner said about bringing Pitt and Rihanna together, wouldn't that be the most gorgeous shot? This Is Us actor Milo Ventimiglia is set to star in the USA Network's limited series, Evil. TVGuide.com reported Ventimiglia will play the 1970s era motorcycle daredevil and stunt performer Evil Knievel. EW.com says that Ethel Frankel will write and executive produce the project, which the cable network described as an exhilarating portrait of a complex man living the American dream, juggling meteoric celebrity and raising a family, and facing the very real possibility that its next jump will kill it. No other casting has been announced yet. Production is slated to begin next year. Knievel died in 2007 at the age of 69. Its Amelia's credits include The Art of Racing in the Rain and Heroes. The cast of Netflix's Lucifer posted uh, for post for a group photo on Twitter as production on the fifth and final season has begun. The photo includes stars Tom Ellis, who plays Lucifer, Laura German, who plays Chloe, Amy Garcia, who play, uh, plays Ella, Rachel Harris, who plays Linda, D.B. Woodside, who plays Am Daniel, Kevin Alejandro, who plays Dan, and Leslie Ann Brandt, who plays McKean, alongside showrunners Joe Henderson and Idli Motherich. Netflix captioned the image on Thursday, hashtag Lucifer Season 5 starts filming tomorrow. Lucifer's fifth and final season will consist of 16 episodes after Netflix added six more episodes in July. The show's fourth season premiered in May. Lucifer initially ran for three seasons on Fox before it was canceled and revived by Netflix. Anderson Amadovich previously said in a statement when the series was renewed for a fifth season, we are so incredibly thankful to Netflix for resurrecting our last season. And now let us finish the story of Lucifer on our own terms. The best is yet to come. Facebook Watch released the first trailer for their original series, Limetown, on Friday. Jessica Biel and Stanley Tucci star in the original, which premieres Wednesday, October 16th at noon, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook Watch. Based on the podcast Limetown, stars Biel as uh, Leah Haddock, an American public radio journalist obsessed with the disappearance of 326 people from Limetown, Tennessee. Fifteen years later, she is still investigating scenes with her auto recorder and broadcasting about it despite attempts to intimidate her into silence. So she plays Emile Haddock, uh, Leah's uncle. Emile was one of the 326 who went missing, but Leah remembers him, suggesting the footage of Tucci in the trailers are flashbacks. Marilyn Matlin plays missing novelist Dietrich Wells. Omar Elba plays Leah's producer Mark Green. Janet Kidder plays Limetown City Manager Lenore Dougal. Kelly Jennerette plays a Limetown survivor going by the alias Winona, the first survivor to surface whom a Facebook watch press release suggests Leah will interview in the second episode. John Beasley plays veteran Warren Chambers, 
who agrees to care for Limetown's pigs. Sherry Som plays the head of APR, Gina Puri. Luis Fierra plays neuroscientologist, um, uh, excuse me, neuroscientist Max F- uh, Finnaitson, suspected in the disappearances. Limetown Podcast has been downloaded over 10 million times, was number one on Apple's podcast charts, and an in- iTunes Best of 2015. Podcasts are inspired more and more television shows. Amazon's hit Homecoming was also based on a podcast. Homecoming just cast Chris Cooper for its second season. Facebook Watch is also making more headway into originals like Sorry for Your Loss starring Elizabeth Olsen and Sacrifice Lies based on the Stephanie Oaks book. Beale's previously foray into series, USA's Network's The Center, earned her Golden Globe and Emmy nominations. Limetown will have its world premiere at the Toronto International Film Festival. Two episodes of Limetown will premiere on October 16th. Ovation released the first trailer for their revival of Inside the Actors Studio on Friday. Inside the Actors Studio premieres Sunday, October 13th at 10 p.m. on Ovation. James Lipton hosted the original Inside the Actors Studio interview show. Lipton would interview actors such as Robin Williams, Halle Berry, and Meryl Streep about the process, their process, and tips for aspiring actors. The show ran for 22 seasons. In Ovation's version, a rotating group of actors interview their colleagues. Interviewers include Alec Baldwin, Jane Lynch, and Ellen Burstyn. Ovation previously announced Burstyn would interview Al Pacino. The new trailer shows Lynch interview David Oyelowo and Henry Winkler. Oyelowo said in the trailer, I didn't work for 14 months. It was a moment in our marriage where my wife and I felt so much deeper in love. I remember us being in bed one day and we just turned to each other and said, we're all we have, but it isn't amazing that we have each other. Oyelowo played Martin Luther King Jr. in the film Selma and his film Don't Let Go opened last week. Winkler has been an actor and director since playing the Fonz on Happy Days. He currently stars as an acting coach on HBO's comedy Barry. Winkler said, One of the first lessons that I've learned, if you do not let what you want go, there's no reason you cannot wind up where you want to be. Kelsey Grammer interviews his Cheers and Frasier directors, uh, James Burroughs. Grammer played Frasier Crane in both series. His most recent role was on Fox's legal uh, drama, Proven Innocent, which Fox canceled. In the trailer, Grammer speaks. Grammer says actors are supposed to defend their character. Eventually, the only expert or the only professional opinion on a certain character is the actor who plays him. You always encourage people to fight for what was right for their character. Ovation Now is the streaming classic episodes of Inside the Actor Studios, Sundays at noon. Aaliyah Kazan, Cheryl Crawford, and Robert Lewis founded the Actor Studio in 1974 based on the techniques of Lee Strasberg. Lipton became the dean of the program and creator of the MFA seminar inside the Actor Studio. Federal prosecutors in Massachusetts lowered their recommended sentence for actor Felicity Huffman to one month on Friday for her guilty plea in a college admissions scandal. Assistant U.S. Attorney Eric Rosen said the court should sentence her to one month in prison followed by one year of supervised release and a $20,000 fine. In May, Huffman pleaded guilty to one count of conspiracy to commit mail fraud and honest service mail fraud for agreeing to pay William Rick Singer, the accused mastermind of the scheme, thousands of dollars to help her daughter with her college admissions process. At the time, Rosen recommended a four-month prison sentence. Court documents indicated Huffman paid $15,000 to Singer to arrange to have her daughter take the SAT exams at a facility where a proctor would correct her answers to improve her scores. A sentence uh, memorandum filed Friday says Huffman's conduct was deliberate and manifestly criminal. It was wrong, she knew it was wrong, and she actively participated in manipulating her daughter's guidance counselor, the testing services, and the schools to which her daughter applied. Her efforts weren't driven by needs of desperation, but a sense of entitlement, or at least moral cluelessness, facilitated by wealth and insularity. Huffman's attorneys requested that the judge sentence her to no prison term and instead asked that she serves one year probation and 250 hours of community service and pay a $20,000 fine. The Desperate Housewives actor, husband, Oscar-nominated actor William H. Macy was not charged in the scheme. In a statement released in April, Huffman said she had, quote, deep regrets and shame over her actions and she plans to accept responsibility for her crime. She says... 
I am ashamed of the pain that I have caused my daughter, my friends, my family, my colleagues, and the educational community. I want to apologize to them, and especially I want to apologize to the students who work hard every day to get into college, and to the parents who make tremendous sacrifices to support their children and to do honestly. Huffman says that she betrayed her daughter, who had no knowledge of the scheme. Huffman says this transgression towards her and the public I will carry for the rest of my life. My desire to help my daughter is no excuse to break the law or engage in dishonesty. Huffman was one of 50 people implicated in the scheme, dubbed Varsity Blues, in which prospective students paid for unlawful help with the standardized tests or pay bribes to be designated as student athletes for sports they didn't play. One of the accused was another actor, Lori Lofkin, who allegedly paid $500,000 to help her two daughters gain acceptance to the University of Southern California through its roaring team. Laughlin and her husband, Mosamiso Gilanulli, pleaded not guilty in April. They each face 20 years in prison. Henrik Olsen Lejiga, a Swedish attorney who represented rapper Aesop Rocky in an assault case this summer, was shot multiple times Friday in ambush in Stockholm, authorities said. Lejiga, would call police to report he'd been shot in the head and back at an apartment building in the Swedish capital and was taken to a hospital. His condition was described as serious but stable. Police later said they arrested the suspect. Local report she is a former attorney who had been barred for, from communicating with Lajisha. Lajisha defended the American musician, whose real name is Rakim Mayers, on a charge of assault stemming from a brawl in June. Mayers was allowed to leave Sweden and was given a two-year suspended sentence last month. Authorities said that they weren't sure whether the ambush was tied to the case or his high-profile clients. The Swedish police authorities said police have arrested several people for questioning. The investigation is at an intense stage, and the police are working on several different fronts to make progress. Billie Eilish portrays a fallen angel in her new music video for All the Good Girls Go to Hell. The clip released on Wednesday features the singer donning wings and falling down to earth. Edith lands into a pool of oil, completely covered herself and her wings in the black substance. Edith then begins walking around a fiery landscape with fire erupting around her. Edith's wings also start to burn. Edith sings during the chorus, All the good girls go to hell because even God herself has enemies. And once the water starts to rise and heaven's out of sight, she wants the devil on her team. All the good girls go to hell appear on Edith's debut album, When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? Yeah, she also posted a message about the bottom of the video about climate change and the United Nations upcoming Climate Action Summit on September 23rd. She said, right now there are millions of people all over the world begging our leaders to pay attention. Our earth is warming up at an unprecedented rate. Ice caps are melting. Our oceans are rising. Our wildlife is being poisoned and our forests are burning. She continued, on, on September 23rd, the UN will host the 2019 Climate Action to discuss how to tackle these issues. The clock is ticking on Friday, September 20th, and Friday, September 27th, you can make your voice heard, take it to the streets. Camille Cabell released two new songs on Thursday, Shameless and Liar, from her upcoming second album, Tal Romance. Cabell released the audio for Liar, on YouTube alongside a music video for Shameless. The fiery clip features the singer using a confessional booth inside a church, a number of women who look like Cabela dancing in red dresses. Cabela sings in the chorus, Right now I'm shameless, screaming my lungs out for you, not afraid to face it. I need you more than I want to, need you more than I want to, show me you're shameless. Cabela and Liar sings about losing control and being unable to avoid the temptation of a lover. Cabela sings, I said I won't lose control, I don't want it. I said I won't get too close, but I can't stop it. There's no set release for Romance. Cole uh, Cabela last released the collaborative song Senorita with Shawn Mendes in June. Lil Nas X looks for the distant future in his new music video Panini. The video released on Thursday channels sci-fi films Blade Runner and features multiple holographic advertisements of Lil Nas X plastered over a futuristic city. The young woman is unable to escape the advertisements and tries to get away by taking Uber. Little Nas X then approaches her in an alleyway alongside dancing robots. The woman next boards a flight, which Little Nas X reaches by using a pair of jet-powered boots. The rapper eventually turns off the advertisement, 
and leaves the woman alone after she jumps out of the plane and lands safely. Little Nas X raps, I, Panini, don't you be a meanie. Thought you want me to go up? Why are you trying to uh, keep me teen now? Now they need me, number one, on streaming. Oh yeah, you used to love me, so what happened? What's the meaning? Panini appears in Little Nas X's EP7, which also features Old Town Road remix featuring Billy Ray Cyrus. Little Nas X and Cyrus won Song of the Year for Old Town Road remix recently at the 2019 MTV Video Music Awards. Rock legend Iggy Pop released a new solo album called Free on Friday. He tweeted a new album by at Iggy Pop Free out now. The post includes a brief video of a beach with the musician emerging from the waves on a moonlit night. Iggy Pop of 72 last dropped an album post-pop depression in 2016. He was the lead singer of the punk group The Stooges. Hip-hop superstar Nicki Minaj announced Thursday on Twitter that she's retiring from her music career. Minaj's career has led to multiple MTV Video Music Award wins and 10 Grammy nominations tweeted Thursday that she's retiring to spend time with her family. The Anaconda singer wrote, I decided to retire and have my family. I know you guys are happy now. To my fans, keep repping me. Do it till the death of me. X in the box, cause ain't nobody checking me. Love you for life. Minaj recently performed for Planned Parenthood's Band Together's Band Off campaign, which aims to raise awareness about the restrictive legislation of reproductive rights in states like Georgia, Louisiana, Alabama, and more. The performer recently canceled a scheduled appearance at a music festival in Saudi Arabia to protest the country's restri restrictive laws, including a ban on women driving without male escorts. Minaj's latest single, Megatron, was released in June. John Mayer showcased what it takes to make a song in a new music video for his latest track, Carry Me Away. Mayer in the clip released on Thursday is featured working inside the studio to craft Carry Me Away alongside producers and musicians. The behind the scenes footage includes Mayer spending time with his dog, recording vocals and messing with the soundboard. Mayer says, I'm such a bored, I'm such a bummer. There must be more behind the summer. I want someone to make my trouble. Been away too safe inside my bubble. Take me out and keep me up all night. Let me live on the wilder side of life. Carry Me Away is Mayer's newest song after releasing Guess I Just Feel Like in February. So you also performed for fans at a concert in August. A new song with Chris Stapleton titled I Just Remembered That I Didn't Care. Mayer will be wrapping up his North American tour on September 14th at the Forum in Inglewood, California. And that is your entertainment report for Friday, September 6, 2019. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back on Monday to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R A Y M E L O. On Twitter at the Enter Report or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the Entertainment Report. Anytime you want on iHeartRadio, just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainer Report, and it'll take you to the page. Everyone have a great weekend. Good night, and God bless you all.